Shamim Khan, I've been a physio for 32 years. I'm in practice for 26 years. My name is Jacqueline Scott. Um, I've been practicing for nearly 21 years. My name is Sen Zailwe. Mazibubo. My name is Isabel Lampra. Desiree Perry. I'm Anna Swanepoel, a physiotherapist now nearly for 29 years and um, I've been in private practice for 28 years and it's now 14 years that I'm with workability. The more we get to know of the brain, the more we realize the belief systems we have plays a very big impact. If you feel just actually normal stiffness from not being moving or exercising. Our brain perceive it as, oh, it's my desk or oh, it's my facets. We've known for many years that there are too much surgery taking place at huge costs to patients, to medical aids, to healthcare professionals. And the evidence has clearly stated that rehabilitation is a huge difference, yet we're not seeing it. The BNAP program is specifically aimed at patients with chronic back and neck pain. So that's basically having pain for longer than three months. There's a special benefit that's unlocked with the BNAP program. So it doesn't come from the patient's normal savings account or their normal physiotherapy benefit. It comes from the risk pool and the patient is basically stratified in risks and that depending on their risk stratification they will be awarded a certain amount of treatments. I think a lot of patients arrive here with us and they are um, they don't have hope anymore. They've had pain for a very long time, they don't know what to do about their pain, they think that there's nothing else that can be done. Um, some of them has had surgery, some of them has been told that they need surgery and they don't want to go for surgery. You can imagine what COVID-19 has done just recently. People are stressed. People have been sitting down, sitting on the computers and all that. So I'm seeing a rise in terms of people struggling with their backs and necks. With the BNAP program, many patients avoid surgery. Patients' perception of what uh, a back needs changes because they all think, oh, I've got a disc, I need surgery. So when we do pain education with the information provided by workability, they change their perception and by the end of the program, when we ask them, do you still think you need surgery? They said, no, I'll never have surgery. I realize now that my problem was that I was inactive. Of the patients coming through, we really have a very high success rate. Lots of magnificent results that sometimes actually surprise us. Most of our patients, they see their GPs less, they reduce the intake of medication, and we've had quite a few patients that by following the program and self-manage, they could prevent surgery. So I think that's a really big benefit to the medical aids, but I mean, for us, obviously, to the patient as well. The results have impressed me more than I initially anticipated it would, and I think it's because we're looking at these factors. There's more than one health professional saying the same thing. There's sufficient time, there's sufficient funds, there's a repetition and a participation from the patient's side in what we're doing. It's a, phys it's a program that's outcomes based, it's, it's not a passive program, patients are required to participate in activities or exercises that is based on what they've stated is important for them and where they want to move to. The changes have been extraordinary to me because it's a population, the chronic pain patients is a population I've worked with before or throughout my career and the shifts that has come as a result of the BNAP program actually blew my mind. Benefits provided by the BNAP program for the medical aids is they've got good um, outcome measures and they know there's a certain standard or, of care that's provided by practices in the workability network and there's the quality insurance aspect as well. The medical aides are actually the ones demanding that we go there now. They are now reading the evidence and seeing sure we've we this is what the evidence is saying and you know what guys we're gonna it's gonna cost us less so it's fantastic actually it, in some ways everybody has helped you and it costs less it's like it's amazing i think the workability program is saving the funders a lot of money um, many of these patients would otherwise be admitted to hospital for pain management and some of them for surgery so there's a huge saving to the funders which the workability has achieved for the funders you know, and for the patient, of course. Those people, they just like, really, I have 
been taking medication all my life. I've been going to a GP with this back problem, with this knee problem, with this injury, and they'll give me the medication. Of which is not the way to go if you want to rehabilitate the country. We need to give the correct service, which is rehabilitation, rehabilitation, workability.